What is good, guys? It's Ray J back with another video. And in this one, I want to break down what's going on with Tesla, Spine, Fiddy, the QQQ, and a couple of other tickers. I'm going to break down what's happened to the market so far and break down some very important technical developments and developments from the Fed, which are going to be very important. But before I break anything down with all this information, before I talk about the FOMC meeting that's happening for today and what Jerome Powell may end up saying, let me just mention a couple of things. I am firstly not a financial planner, so take nothing I say as financial advice. And also, if you guys can, please smash the like button if you want to see more videos like this. It not only benefits me, it benefits the entire community as a whole. So what's going on with the markets? Looking at SPY, we got a nice little pump when we started off. We saw this thing start pumping since we opened. Then it started to cool off. So we hit 422, rejected off that. That's where we have this tight resistance between uh, 421.25 and like 422.5, at least historically. And we got rejected in this zone, came back down from liquidity. And SPY ended up testing this 419 support or around like 419.25. And since then, we're, we've been stuck between... 420.5 and 419.3 going back and forth for the past hour and a half. So the question is, how is the market going to move going forward? And here's my answer. So we got some new jobs numbers that came out this morning. The U.S. job openings for September have risen quite a bit, showing continued strength in the job sector. They basically showed that for the month of September, according to the data at least, and I know these data points could always be you know very biased, very manipulated, but despite that, they were showing 9.55 million jobs uh, for the job openings for the month of September. That's hotter than the consensus and the forecast. That is not what the Fed wants. And at 2 o'clock p.m. Eastern time, we have the interest rate hike decision coming out. This is when the Fed is going to make some very important announcements about whether or not they're going to be raising rates. Now, I believe the Fed is not going to be raising rates at 2 o'clock p.m. They're not going to make the announcement. So we're not going to find out about any new rate hikes for now. We're going to be watching what the projected rate hikes are going to be as well, just to see how it goes. If we get some kind of pop, do not fully trust it because what's going to matter more is the press conference. So at 2 p.m. we have at 2 p.m. we have the interest rate hike decision coming out. That's going to make the headlines in the news. And we have a separate event at 2.30 p.m. That's going to be the press conference. During the press conference, Jerome Powell is going to give a speech. And what he says is going to shake the markets. Now, I don't know what he's going to say, but I believe that there's a higher probability of him causing the markets to rug pull. I'm going to break down exactly why that is. So looking at the job quits, they were as expected, but actually a little bit lower than expected based off the forecast. But the job openings were quite stronger than expected. That tells us that because the job sector is looking strong, this is often another indicator that it's going to be a little bit more tricky for the Fed to bring inflation back down to 2%. And there's a high probability, in my opinion, that Jerome Powell is going to repeat what he said in the past. And that is the Fed is not going to pause just yet, like officially, like straight up pause and never raise rates for this cycle, uh, for the next cycles as well. There's a high probability he's not going to make that announcement, and he's going to say something like the Fed is going to be open to more rate hikes. They may have to raise rates again in the future, but they don't know for sure, and they're going to be watching the data. I think that's the most likely possibility. And because Powell is not going to be announcing the pause, because he might say some hawkish things about the job sector, because he says something about inflation, who knows what he's going to say. There's a possibility he's going to be a little more hawkish. He might say something about how the Fed is open to another possible rate hike, looking at the job openings, and this could cause the market to slow down. Please note that the market has been pumping and pumping and pumping, approaching this FOMC meeting, right? So the market's expecting a pause. And I think we're going to get the pause, but I don't know about the Fed's projected rates because the forecasts are going to be even more important. So just to be clear, Watch for some high volatility at 2 p.m. Eastern time. We're going to see if the market pops or not. And then don't fully trust whichever way the market goes at 2 p.m., whatever the rate hike decision is going to be. It's most likely going to be a, the, the Fed not raising rates, but we'll just have to wait and see. And then after that, we have Jerome Powell's speech at the press conference and the Q&A session. Whatever Powell causes is going to cause a big move in the markets. Now, the odds do favor the downside, but just to be safe, you know, you never know with Powell. If he's dovish, hypothetically, SPY can start pumping back up to 422. If we break above it and hold it, I wouldn't rule out the possibility of us getting very close to 424. If Powell is very hawkish and says something about how the Fed is open to raising rates again, you know, he could cause SPY to drop all the way back down to 417 or even below that. 
and maybe even lower than that. He could cause this thing to just continue to sink all the way down. Uh, one risk for the markets is going to be the fact that when you look at SPY, uh, SPY has that unfilled gap, right? The gap I've been talking about in my previous videos is all the way back here in the 411 area, I believe. We have this big gap down here, which was formed on the 30th of October. Could we end up filling this gap? Let me just pull this up on the four hours so you can see this more clearly. Are we going to end up dropping to fill the gap that was left down here? Or is the market going to continue to push? I don't know, guys. Either way, even if the market does come down to fill this gap, it's just another buying opportunity. I think the market's going to rebound anyways for November. But we could be getting the final rug pull before a big squeeze or not, right? It all depends on which room hell causes. I am apprehensive, and that's why you want to be open-minded just to be safe. For Tesla, uh, don't forget, guys, we have a very, very important support to watch for on the weekly time frame. This red line, the 200 EMA at 196 is what you're going to be watching. We want to see Tesla hold above that if we do end up sinking. That's going to be a key support. Now, pulling up the Tesla chart, if Powell causes a rug pull, okay, if Powell somehow says something that's hawkish and Tesla breaks down, if he does that, there's a risk of Tesla coming down to 196. And if that fails us, you know, 193, 190 are all possibilities. If Powell pumps the markets and the market keeps going, Tesla could pump all the way up to about this, you know, 208 area, even 210 is a possibility. I don't know what's going to happen with 100% certainty, but I do lean a bit more in favor of Powell potentially repeating what he said in the past and being a little bit more hawkish, causing the market to get scared and maybe, a, you know, causing a slight uh, drop for Tesla. So there is a risk of that happening. So I do lean a bit more in that direction. I'm just not sure the extent of the rug pull. I'm not sure about, you know, exactly what Powell's going to say. So we'll just have to wait and see. Uh, for the QQQ, I wanted to call out that this has a very similar trend. Now, one concern about the QQQ is the fact that although the market's attempting to balance, I just wanted to call out that the QQQ on the weekly, it's making an attempt to bounce, but when you look at the four hour time frame, uh, this is the biggest one we could look at when it comes to these gaps and stuff. But to see the gaps, we have a big gap. There's this big unfilled gap at 345. If Powell causes a big rug pull, if he slams the market down, we could fill this gap. If he pumps the markets, we could see the QQQ going all the way up to 356 or above that. I It, it could really be either way, guys. I, I really don't know. So. If we're bullish, I mean, we could be testing these higher levels like the high of the day and breaking it. If we're bearish, these imbalances could fail and we could see the QQQ approach 350. The odds do favor a more hawkish Powell, but we'll just have to wait and see. On NVIDIA, we called out the inverse head and shoulders, but the thing about NVIDIA is uh, I was thinking it might drop first and then balance later on. Instead, it's already starting to balance thanks to AMD. But be careful. Even though NVIDIA looks like it has a nice accumulation right here and it does look like it could go higher, there's always the risk of it coming back down for a liquidity grab, liquidity grab excuse me, up to like 407 or so before we balance and start pushing up to these higher levels. Or, you know, it could just keep going depending on Powell. So if Powell gives us the rug pull, NVIDIA could return to 405, maybe even below that. If Powell pumps us, NVIDIA is heading for 425 or so. So it's all going to depend on Powell. We'll see what he says. And please watch these levels very carefully. Last but not least, we have the notorious Apple stock. If Powell pumps the markets, Apple could keep going for 173.5. If Powell causes the rug pull, you know, we could sink back down to 169. We'll just have to wait and see what Powell says. So make sure you're ready for this and make sure you have to do what's necessary. All right, guys, that's it for now. Get ready for some high volatility. Once again, we have the rate hike decision coming at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, the Fed is most likely going to announce that they're not going to be raising rates. That's very probable because that's what the market's expecting. And if, you know, the, the Fed ends up not raising rates, that's going to be decent for now. But then after that, at 2.30 p.m., we have the press conference and everything could change depending on what Jerome Powell says. So we'll see what Powell says, if he causes some kind of rug pull or not. Just be patient to do what you have to do, guys. I thank you all so much for listening. All right. So have a great day, guys. Get ready for some high volatility. And I'll see you guys very soon. Thanks again and peace out.